Hey everyone, Harry here to talk about some hot water that Trump partisans have gotten themselves into by trying to advance the claim, the, the old claim, but the golden oldie for Trump that he's never abandoned that the 2020 uh, election and his loss was somehow flawed or fraudulent. And it's a good general reminder that as dire as things are, and I think they are, I don't intend to sugarcoat them at all, Trump could uh, prove to be a more reasonable um, president, but I see no reason from his track record to expect that he will. And we have absolutely woolly days ahead where the Constitution is stretched to its breaking point and may be um, beyond. Nevertheless, we still have the press, although Trump is taking aim at them savagely. It's going to be a part of his plan of governing. Uh, he wants to really put pressure on the press, the, who he thinks of as the fake press, etc., and the courts, who held up pretty well through the first Trump administration. And that's what has happened here, because there are a series of folks who are now in uh, hot water, and an article by the Washington Post makes a kind of good compendium of them. But, you know, half a dozen or more folks who just probably thought their way they could, with impunity, just go and make these completely false claims or further them or try to make trouble with them, and they've been um, – paying uh, for the, those mistakes. So let me just go through some of the things that the Post has mentioned, and and but think of it in general along the theme of, you know, notwithstanding that uh, Trump has been put in the White House and there are many people serving with him who are absolutely dedicated to certain lies uh, where the rubber hits the road in, in legal action, there, uh, there are the courts as well as, say, juries and, you know, some, some limits. All right. But we have a, um, a GOP precinct committee man from, uh, and a former congressional candidate in Indiana who turned himself into police earlier this week. So Savage uh, attended uh, a test of the of voting machines in Indiana. They wound up a little bit uh, short, two ballots short, and he went on to make these public claims about how the, the machines were messed up, and he joined a Facebook event where he talked about the miscount, but it was total bullshit, uh, the ballots were missing. You ready for this? Because Savage had taken them, according to Indiana State Police. So we have surveillance footage showing him folding up the ballots and stuffing them in his pocket. I don't know if any of you ever saw the movie Election, but where that is the um, the downfall of Matthew Broderick and uh, his nemesis, Reese Witherspoon. He uh, folds and keeps a ballot he's found out and he's ruined that's the kind of crime we had he says oh he thought he could take them and he didn't have any malintent uh you know good luck tell it to the judge is the basic uh response there and so you know he's now turned himself into police we have others half a dozen others so in virginia yeah, out of a Trump supporter who was charged with, found not guilty, but charged with attempted illegal voting, showed up to vote on election day, even though he already had done so. Uh, his claim, I was messing with them to see if they were going to let me vote again to see what kind of fraud is going on. So the old, you know, investigating who the real killers are or, or whatever, uh, as a way of furthering the, the Trump claim of fraud that is a phantom claim. Uh, and it actually showed the system work. He, the, uh, he was caught and they said, Oh, you can't get a ballot. You already, uh, voted. And that's why he was acquitted because his attorneys argued, Hey, you can't show beyond a reasonable doubt that he actually would have gone through with it. But obviously he paid the price even in, in the charges. Local Republican Party uh, apparatchik in Michigan said that members considered submitting mismatched signatures on purpose 
Uh, again, we're going to test the state's verification uh, process, but they took that to a, a certain uh, stage before backing down. And then the Washington Post, it's not the, the actual instances are by no means huge crimes. They're small, bare stuff, but they illustrate well that, uh, you know, going forward and taking legal action based on Trump's lies can get you in hot water. And so the Post article, they tried to prove Trump's fraud claims they'd failed and got in trouble, lays out another handful of similar uh, situations where people, conservative activists who wanted to substantiate uh, the false claims of some kind of uh, ballot tampering or mishandling by machines or the like went forward and did things that in fact were uh, illegal and have paid the price. A small price to be sure, but just a reminder that it's not really anything goes in the Trump 2.0 era because certain um, efforts to completely go into lockstep with his false claims can easily give rise to uh, to criminal uh, problems as they did for these eight or so folks. So just a good um, reminder of the broader landscape. He's got, does Trump, a lot of control and a lot of ability to do mischief with the levers of the executive branch that he does have and his sort of interim impact on the Congress and the, you could say, friendly uh, Supreme Court, when things come to it, all of it very daunting, very worrisome, very grave even, I would say, as to constitutional rule of law. But uh, not anything and everything uh, goes, and, and uh, Trump supporters who try to make trouble based on this fictitious state of affairs uh, there are many such states of affairs, but here in particular that the 2020 election was somehow flawed. Uh, the, the system overall retained some tools to deal with. So that's what this uh, illustrates. And those vestigial tools, what's remaining, going to have a lot of pressure uh, on them going forward and whether or not they can do the job of bolstering all the constitutional protections that Trump is dead set on eviscerating. It's an important and by no means certain question. Talk to you later. Thanks for tuning in. If you enjoyed this video and other Talking Feds content, please take a second to like and subscribe. Talk to you later.